Hello all, in this video we will see about Streptococcus pyogenes which belongs to the family Streptococci. Cocci means round or spherical shaped bacteria and Streptos means twisted or coiled in appearance. The name pyogenes is given because it is found in suppurative lesions that is pus forming lesions. Therefore the name Streptococci pyogenes. The family of streptococci bacteria are either aerobic, facultative anaerobes or obligate anaerobes. So among these classified bacteria, aerobic and facultative anaerobes alone have hemolytic properties. Based on the hemolytic properties, we have alpha, beta and gamma bacteria. The alpha bacteria show partial hemolysis, therefore a green discoloration is seen. Whereas the beta hemolytic bacteria show complete hemolysis and colorless zone is seen in the blood agar culture medium. Whereas the gamma type of bacteria does not show any hemolytic properties and are non-hemolytic. The beta hemolytic streptococci are again divided into 20 groups by Lansfield. Lansfield named them, named them from A to V without I and J. And these 20 groups are classified based on the C carbohydrate antigen present on the cell wall of the bacteria. And Lansfield group A, which we commonly call as Streptococcus pyogenes, was again subdivided into 1 to 80 subtypes. 80 subtypes were given by Griffith based on the surface proteins MTR. And the group A of Streptococci cause human infections majority among the Streptococci. And the Streptococcus pyogenes morphology is as follows. It is spherical or ovoid as the name cocci suggests, gram positive and non-motile, non-sporing. The diameter of the bacteria ranges from 0.5 to 1 micrometer. Capsule may be present in some strains either made of hyaluronic acid or polysaccharide. Chain formation is the classical feature of Streptococcus pyogenes. It happens because of the cell division fail to separate completely. The divided cells form a chain. The daughter cells are attached one and one to another. Therefore, the chain formation is a characteristic feature in Streptococcus pyogenes. In culture, the aerobes and facultative anaerobic nature of the bacteria we have already seen and the ideal temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. The range varies from 22 to 42 degrees Celsius. Nutritive requirement includes either blood serum or fermentable carbohydrates. Blood agar, sheep blood agar is ideal because the hemolytic property of the bacteria can be demonstrated in blood agar only. And beta hemolysis is what we will see now. How it appears. If you leave the bacterial strains overnight in blood agar, colorless zone of complete hemolysis appears. The complete hemolysis is associated with the beta strains. The colorless zone ranges from 2 to 4 mm wide, whereas the colonies range from 0.5 to 1 mm wide. They are pinpoint in appearance. And around these colonies, RBCs are destroyed for 2 to 4 mm wide, hence the colorless zone. And this happens because of the streptolysin O and S. O stands for oxygen labile strain and S stands for oxygen stable uh, hemolytic uh, streptolysin. And we should also remember the other features of the colonies. The colony is semi-transparent, it is low convex and if large capsules are present, the mucoid nature of the colonies can be appreciated. The selective media used include crystal violet blood agar and PNF medium. The biochemical reactions which are useful in differentiating this Streptococcus pyogenes from the other bacteria are enumerated here. The Streptococcus pyogenes is catalase negative whereas the catalase test is positive in Staphylococcus. It is The Streptococcus strain is not soluble in 10% bile whereas the Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria is soluble. The Streptococcus pyogenes produce pyrase enzyme. Pyrase hydrolyzes a particular compound and therefore the PYR test is positive. It produces deep, deep red color and this differentiates it from the other Streptococci which produce a diffuse orange color. 
Now we will see about the antigenic structure of Streptococcus pneumoniae. Now let us see about the antigenic structure of Streptococcus pyogenes. The antigenic structure starts with the capsule, the outer component. The group A and C of the Lansfield classification have hyaluronic acid as the capsule. It inhibits phagocytosis, therefore it is an important virulence factor. Whereas the second, third and the fourth layer that constitutes the cell wall, the pink layer as denoted here is made of protein and lipoticoic acid. It contains fimbriae for attachment to the host. The middle layer that is it is made up of group specific carbohydrate with which Lansfield classified the bacteria into 20 groups. The third layer the inner layer is made of peptidoglycan. It is responsible for the cell wall rigidity and is also responsible for the pyrogenicity that is the ability to produce fever, induce fever and thrombolytic capability of this bacteria. So these are the three layers of the cell wall. The outer part of the cell wall has some type specific antigens. These antigens as we saw already are M protein, T and R protein. Remember the masala and the globe jamun mix MTR. I just tell it here for your remembrance like a mnemonic okay. And other associated proteins are also present. So let us see what is this M protein, T, R protein. The M protein is heat and acid stable. It is susceptible to trypsin and it is one of the major virulence factor. Now where it plays an important role in this part. The antibody to M protein is protective but it plays a role in the rheumatic fever pathogenesis. Acute rheumatic fever is a non-separative complication of streptococcus which occurs up to 4 weeks after the initial streptococcal infection. Streptococcus is not directly uh, the cause of the acute rheumatic fever but this M protein has a role. We will see about it in later. And M protein is known to inhibit phagocytosis and the as I said, it has a role in rheumatic fever pathogenesis. The remaining proteins are T and R proteins. They have no role in virulence. They are acid labile and trypsin resistance in contrast to the M protein. Pili or fimbria as commonly called, they contain part of M protein and this fimbria is responsible for the attachment to the host. MAPM associated protein SOF serum opacity factor are the other associated proteins what we saw here which is present in the outer part of the cell wall. Let us see about the toxins and enzymes of streptococcus. Toxins include hemolysin and pyrogenic exotoxin. Hemolysin again includes streptolysin O and S. Both are responsible for the beta hemolysis what we see here. Streptolysin O is oxygen labile whereas S is oxygen stable. Therefore, the O is present only in the deep colonies and it is antigenic in nature. Anti-streptolysin O is present in sera and the titus of which is very useful in laboratory diagnosis. It is heat labile also whereas streptococcus uh, streptolysin S is not antigenic in nature. Apart from the property of hemolysis, O is also cytotoxic in nature. It affects WBC platelets and cardiac tissue, whereas S is associated with hemolysis and leukocidal property. The next toxin is pyrogenic exotoxin. The name pyrogenic exotoxin means that it induces fever and it is also known as erythrogenic toxin. This name was given because it was responsible for the rash of scarlet fever. And uh, this toxin is currently named as streptococcal pyrogenic exotoxin SPE and three distinct strains have been seen A, B, C, F are the antigenically distinct SPEs noted. Uh, as I said, these are also super antigens because massive cytokine is re uh, release is seen following the release of this exotoxin. And historically, two tests were done with the help of this exotoxin, Dick test and schultz starlet charlton reaction. These two reactions are currently not uh, used in diagnosis. And moving on to the next important part, enzymes. The enzymes released by streptococcus pyogenes include streptokinase, DNase, NADase, hyaluronidase and other certain enzymes. So let us see about the first enzyme which is the hyaluronidase. 
hyaluronidase is antigenic in nature and it facilitates spread of infection it destroys the hyaluronic acid but earlier we saw that capsules are also made up of hyaluronic acid so what about it the hyaluronidase enzyme is seen in the strains where capsule is absent more amount of enzyme is produced only in those strains therefore this capsule is not related to the hyaluronidase produced by the streptococcus pyogenes and the second enzyme is streptokinase streptokinase is also antigenic in nature and anti streptokinase appear in sera which is helpful in diagnosis it is also known as fibrinolysin because it catalyzes the transfer of plasminogen to plasmin that is it helps in the lysis of the human fibrin clot therefore fibrinolysin denotes the function of streptokinase it has pharmaceutical purpose also and it facilitates spread of infection as far as the bacteria is considered by breaking the fibrin barrier the enzyme third enzyme what we will see now is the dna is deoxyribonuclease also known as streptodornase streptodornase has four antigenically dis distinct types among which b is most antigenic it liquefies dna generally the dna which is destroyed is highly viscous but due to the presence of deoxyribonuclease thin serous pus is seen in streptococcal infection the final enzyme is nadas it liberates nicotinamide by acting on nad it is leukotoxic in nature other enzymes include neuraminidase esterase amylase lipase and beta glucuronidase moving on to the final part pathogenesis and laboratory diagnosis pathogenesis of streptococcal infection that especially pyro, pyro, streptococcal pyogenes infection is as the name suggests it is a pyogenic that is pus producing infection and it spreads locally as we saw because of streptokinase hyaluronidase kind of properties it has the ability to spread locally so remember all the pyogenic infection of respiratory tract that is acute tonsillitis pharyngitis scarlet fever which is rare in recent days skin we can remember of infection of wound burns eczema impetigo and necrotizing fasciitis is one of the common spreading infections streptococcal toxic shock syndrome is associated with spe a strain and entire organ system collapses seen it is actually a life threatening condition bacteremia is one of the feature purpural sepsis is associated with the genital infection and the internal organ abscess is also seen in organs such as liver lungs kidney and etc the final part that is the non separative complication we saw all the separative diseases of streptococcus now the main two non separative complication of uh, streptococcal infection is acute rheumatic fever and acute glomerulonephritis acute rheumatic fever is preceded usually by sore throat whereas glomerulonephritis is preceded by skin infection it appears one to four weeks after the initial infection the main pro property of these kind of non separative complications are the cross reacting antibody the antibodies produced in response to streptococcus cross react with the antigens present in kidney and heart the laboratory diagnosis of streptococcal is mainly by the specimen collected and cultured the specimen is collected either by pus swab blood or csf depending on the site of infection using a sterile container and if it is need to be transported pyx transport medium is used gram staining as we saw it is a positive gram positive cocci which appears as chains and in culture with sheep blood agar shows hemolysis as we saw already it is anaerobic and 37 degree celsius with 5 to 10 percent carbon dioxide is the ideal condition to grow colony morphology and biochemical reactions we have already discussed in the earlier sites liquid media when we culture it shows granular turbidity with powdery deposits which is point to remember and regarding the non separative complications aso titer greater than 200 units is helpful in the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever and in case of acute glomerulonephritis anti dna is b greater than 300 units is helpful in diagnosis moving on to the treatment part of streptococcal pyogenes infection 
Penicillin G is the drug of choice. Amoxicillin is also used. In case of penicillin allergy, erythromycin is used. Cephalexin is also used. Moving on to the prophylaxis part, in order to uh, help in the prevention of rheumatic fever, in children with early signs of rheumatic fever, long period administration of penicillin is advised. So, we saw all the basic and important characteristics pertaining to streptococcus pyogenes. Now, what is CAMP reaction? Are you interested in knowing about this? If so, please let us know in the comment section so we could create a separate video on this CAMP reaction. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.